You've probably heard about lean startup philosophies. Why is it that companies like Facebook, Evernote and Drop Dropbox exploded in 2008 while the rest of the world was reeling from the impact of the GFC? Why is it that some companies stay nimble while others de-evolve into bloated behemoths? Today I'm fortunate enough to be talking to Kiri Theos. He's someone who's lived the corporate life and the startup dream. He went from a management consultant at Deloitte to VP of marketing at Rocket Internet, where he helped this e-commerce site grow from a startup to 300 staff. He's an international man of mystery. He's lived in six countries across, across four continents, but he's happy to talk today and share some of the secrets behind how to run a business like a lean startup. Thanks for joining me, Kerry. Great to be here, James. So Kerry, what separates a lean startup from just another small business or even a bloated big business? Yeah, look, James, I think what separates a startup from, from uh, uh, other kind of kinds of businesses is a stronger appreciation of the importance of time. Um, look, time, it's the only resource that you can't replace. You know, you can make more money, uh, you can, you know, develop your networks, um, uh, but you, you can't, you can't get any more time. Uh, uh, so, you know, smart entrepreneurs, uh, they, 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 they focus on, on what, what they're best at and they maximize, uh, the use of their time. Because, uh, I, I just seem to know it that with a lot of the entrepreneurs that I speak to, they're almost guided by this internal clock. They are all, they are always in a hurry. And then the moment that you're in a hurry, you're always working out ways to use your time better. That's right. So, you know, it's helpful, I think to, to first of all, keep a diary of um uh, how you're using your time you know identify uh you know where 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 you're you're, you're spending the most time where, where you're spending it ineffectively um and where you can sort of uh be more efficient i think i remember i think it was richard branson who i first heard about doing this and yeah basically he would spend his days at the end of each day he'd take a record of what, how he'd spend his time and the next morning he'd make some notes about how he wanted to spend his time and by doing that, that's a fantastic way of working out which bits of time, how you, whether you're using, as you said it before, whether you're using your time effectively or ineffectively. Yeah, as a business owner, you really need to um, uh, focus on, on on areas where you can be sort of strategic on the core the core areas of value that you can that you can bring. Um, uh, you know, the 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 more operational and mechanical tasks will tend to distract you and take you away from your what 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 your mission is as a as an entrepreneur but but where you where you bring value is is in the, in those strategic tasks so you know it, you you really need to try to focus as much as possible on um on, on spending your time on those tasks and uh uh you know uh, finding finding others to to lighten the load in in the other areas i remember for me the biggest moment for me was something to, i think to do with bookkeeping and i was spending money at that time at one of my core tasks was to bring in revenue for my print magazine to sell advertising and someone pointed out to me that over a two month period i'd sell eighty thousand dollars worth of advertising on my own which was forty thousand dollars a month yet i was only spending one week of my time selling ads and someone pointed out to me that if I was and then I'd spend almost an entire week on things like bookkeeping and someone pointed out to me why don't you outsource that to someone for 25 to 50 dollars an hour and you can focus on the things that generate the greatest impact for your business and of course I did and and ended up paying someone 50 dollars an hour and went out and ended up bringing in $80,000 a month. Wasn't quite that, but that was the goal. Yeah. Um, what, are some of the, what are some of the things, so let's imagine that we're keeping a diary and we're putting down all the different things that we're spending our days doing. What are some of the common sort of time sucking things that most business owners and builders get drawn into that seem to be ineffective uses of their time? Well, I think probably the main one is, is your administrative financial uh, uh, management uh, uh, you know I, I could tell you uh, having been in business myself uh, and, and even now in my current role you know uh, uh, managing finances is is a, a tricky task and you know 
Um, uh, it's something that needs your constant attention. Uh, uh, but you know, there are people out there who can help, who can lighten the load, um, who, who can take those responsibilities. Uh, you know, the, the other kind of tasks are uh, tasks that people think that they can do themselves really easily, uh, but why, but they wind up, you know, spending a, a huge amount of time that, 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 that they didn't anticipate um, uh, on because they want the end result to be perfect. So, you know, the example here would be, you know, designing a logo or, um, uh, you know, building a website or something like that. You know, yes, there are great tools out there that, that provide a sort of self-serve uh, model, but, um, uh, you know, d does that mean that you should be, as, as an entrepreneur, as a business person, spending your time on that, you know? Uh, uh, great managers, great entrepreneurs are also great delegators. You know, they, they uh, identify the areas where other people could do it better and they, and, they, and they pass on the responsibility in that way. The classic example for me was spending four hours putting, down, putting together a PowerPoint presentation and I suck at PowerPoint uh, when it occurred to me later that I could have used a service like an Elance or an Odesk and got someone else to do it for 25 to $50 and uh, had it done overnight while I slept if I could only just provide them with a, a script. Uh, another one that I've noticed people spend a lot of time is in is um, is just anything messing around with an email anything that messes around with a database, whether it's a financial <laughs> database or an email database, formatting and reformatting. Yeah, so I actually have um, a virtual assistant uh, who's based in the Philippines, and she's you know really responsive, uh, you know really really helpful you know any time that I that I have a, a sort of routine or, or an admin task that I need her to help out with I just you know start chatting with her on Skype I say hey you know can you um, uh, you know research this top 10 names of uh, uh, whatever the, the companies in this particular industry um, and you know she, she pulls the data she comes back to me with a spreadsheet and it's 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 highly accurate um, you know, she's a real professional. And I think that, you know, uh, we, we need to understand that in a global world, in a global marketplace, um, uh, you know, the, the, these, these kind of efficiencies, this kind of efficiency can, can be found. Um, for me, do, I don't know if you know this, but the first time I ever used Elance was in about 2008. And uh, for me, I needed a list of the top 100 um, intellectual property firms in Australia. And I jumped onto Elance. Uh, someone, I think they were in India, someone responded to my job. Uh, and overnight, they not only gave me the list of the top 100 firms, they, they were actually only, to come, only able to come up with 80, but they actually also, in this Excel spreadsheet that they sent me, had the name of the firm, the name of the owner, the name of the marketing decision maker, and their phone number and their email address. I couldn't believe it and it cost me $45. And that way, at that time, as I mentioned before, I was selling advertising. So suddenly I had a little leads list and I could just call them up one by one and have a bit of a conversation with them. But that would have taken me days. I don't even still to this day know how they did it other than just to visit, their, visit all their websites and collect all their data from the websites. But that, there's a classic example where I could have spent two days assembling a list as a typical small business owner or a startup would do. But I, um, I outsourced it to somebody else and they performed the task for me. So if we have a look at uh, the sorts of things that we've talked about under this topic of time, our first theme, um, there is one clear action and uh, that is keep a diary. Keep a diary of how you are spending your time. How are you spending your time? Because once you know how you spend your time, you can find other people that can perform that for you. That's the first action. The second action, um, we briefly touched on this, and I think it's worth revisiting, is identifying what is, um, say, like a core skill versus a mechanical. What do we mean when we talk about things like a core skill? So when we think about uh, core skills, we're really talking about the creative uh, uh, Actions that that we can do the the the, the strategic um, uh, business planning, uh, spending time with your customers, understanding your business and the vision of the business, and and where your where where you want to take it. Um, you know the more sort of routine tasks would be uh, uh, as, as we spoke about the admin, the uh, database management, 
uh, you know, the day-to-day -day operational things that, that everybody has to do. And what I find really interesting is once I, I, I begin to do this myself, and I do this all the time, and I start to separate what is core or strategic from what is mechanical or admin, 